Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever, forever, forever. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. 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 I'm blessed, I'm blessed. To stand taller for the player of the day, making way for tomorrow. Consistent content distributed with quality is passions of the youth. Get used, creating prodigies. The cornerstone for the call ins and interviews. Opinions, countdowns, trivia is the latest news. Bearing gifts, so this for me to you. Guaranteed to be what you don't want to miss. So have a seat, cause I'm back. I'm back. What's going on, man? This is Jarrell Hessler. Welcome to Jarrell's Journal. Today is, what is today? Tuesday, 
man, I'm excited because I have a, a vet in the game to join me today. Uh, his name is Ease Batova. He is a vet uh, from players personnel to working with um, sports agencies with branding. And he also has his own podcast. It just popped off and is big and he's dropping straight jewels on there. So I'm very excited to have him today. And we're going to be learning a lot and learning a lot about him. Um, so first and foremost, let me do a, you know, a couple little house cleaning things. Um, if you're on uh, live, if you want to leave a comment, the easiest way is to uh, go to Jarrell Hessler Sports Consulting page um, and leave a comment there. It's easy for me to see and it will come up. If not, you can also place this um, in your comments. Just copy and uh, paste it, put it in the comments, and it'll give StreamYard the ability to uh, allow you to stream it. Um, and what it says is you're giving StreamYard, give me one second. And basically what it's saying is you're giving StreamYard the permission to use your uh, Facebook uh, pr uh, profile to make comments on this page. And I'm going to post that up in just a second. But without further ado, I want to introduce Ease Batova, man. Welcome, welcome, man. How you feeling? Man, can we just stop and talk for a moment about that intro, bro? I didn't think that was going to be so smooth, bro. I man. heard the tracks that you laid on there, both tracks, right? The Jarrell's I'm Journey playing, man. <laughs> and then before that, yeah, that was nice. That was nah, nice. man, hey, look, the first one I was, I ain't gonna lie, I was self-conscious about, but uh, yeah, yeah, my man, um, and big <laughs> shout out to uh, my man, JD, he did the intro for me, man. He, I, th I thought he did a great job, man. I thought he oh, did a wonderful sure. job. For sure, man. I, saw, I see you in there with the purple suit and everything, man. That was a good look. Who, hey, look, who you trying to feel has so much, so, much, so much talent with, 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 with the rappers, man? First it was J. Cole. He, Hey, man, oh, I love man. It. I love to see it. Hey, and, you, and you see him, man. He, he's trying to do his thing, man. He's he thinking about going to the NBA, man. All that. Yeah, no. I'm <laughs> we trying to get like you, man, because you are definitely a, not just uh, in a, in a, you know, the sports world, but also a, a fashion person, man. I don't know about all that, man. Look, I, 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 I dabble, you know, do a little bit here, a little bit there. Hey, so real quick, Ease, uh, if my uh, people and my following don't know who you are, could you give a quick background about yourself, uh, like your playing career and how you got into your profession that you are now? Yeah, man, originally from uh, Congo. That's where I was born. Awesome. Uh, you know, lived in Congo and then moved to South Africa shortly after. Um, when I was actually seven years old is whenever we moved to South Africa awesome. because of a civil war that broke out in Congo. So lived in South Africa for a little while, but unfortunately, uh, you know, post-apartheid South Africa still had a lot of tension in the air. Um, you know, Nelson Mandela was a president at the time, which is my hero, you know, one of my yes, biggest role models in world history. But during that time, man, we were not welcomed where we lived. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because of multiple episodes, whether it was a school or my house getting broken into or uh -huh. my little brother getting death threats or my mom getting, mm -hmm. you know, my, my, my mom getting beat, um, it, it, it got to the point to where we left there, moved to Texas. So I grew up in the great state of Texas, man, where I fell in love with the sport of football. And, you know, while playing football, I was fortunate enough to get to Oklahoma State University, uh, played at Oklahoma State University for four years. Um, and while I was playing, I was also very, very involved with, uh, you know, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, where I served as uh, president at, at the local institution. I served as chair for the Big 12 Conference, and then I served as the Big 12 rep at the national level uh, during the period when legislative autonomy was actually a conversation within the NCAA. So got to be a, got to be a part of those conversations. Um, got to even have a, a say in a proposal in there for a uh, full cost of attendance and, and unlimited meals. So, you know, I still hold on to that, to, to that piece of, you know, legislation. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Now, real but, quick, yeah. because you brought up some, and, and um, I have some players from college that went through some similar struggles like that as far as coming uh, to the States. How was that transition from you coming over to the States? Uh, and, and how did it, like, how did it give you, you know, mold your focal point as far as your your mission to where you wanted to go in life yeah we came to the states we didn't know anything bro like you know we we i didn't speak english my parents hardly spoke any english i wasn't mm -hmm. fluent in english until i was nine years old you know mm -hmm. uh, you know i was taking those esl classes e english is a second yeah. language but mm -hmm. especially in the world of sports i didn't know anything about sports it may as well have been a, for a foreign language my focus was on education and i love my parents for you know giving me just that focus of education and the foundation into, you know, the importance of knowledge. But honestly, man, for the most part, it wasn't until I was helping a neighbor out with his bike that his dad came out and he was like, hey, you're pretty fast. You should go for the football team. 
And I was like, all right, like, you know, who touches the ball the most? He's like, yeah. quarterback. I was like, I don't, I don't know if I can throw. Who else? He's like, running back. I said, cool, I'm going to try out for running back. So I tried out for running back. So I played running back, slot receiver, and I played safety uh, okay. in middle school, right? This was in seventh grade, first time I ever played football. Didn't know the rules. The coaches just said, hey, look, here's the ball, go that way. So, that, <laughs> you know, that, that's all it was, man. But, you know, grew to f- fall in love with the game. And, uh, you know, it, it was a big transition for us because we didn't know how recruiting worked. We didn't know any of that. Mm-hmm. I walked on at Oklahoma State and I picked Oklahoma State because of academics. Um, wow. At the time, they had one of only two programs in the country that had a sports uh, media program. So I went there because of the sports media program. And then I actually ended up switching my major after the first year, funny mm-hmm. enough. But, um, you know, went there, had an academic scholarship, eventually was able to earn a football scholarship later on. Um, but, yeah, man, that was an incredible That's experience. Awesome, man. Absolutely. So, so you are uh, you were like one of those stories we actually see on ESPN. You worked hard, and it wasn't about sports for you. It was about education, and you end up getting a academic. I mean, excuse me, an athletic scholarship. That is awesome, man. Congrats. You know, I know it's been a while, but congrats. That's a big accomplishment, right. man. No, seriously, and, and and even to this day, man, that's that's one of the things that I'm definitely definitely the most proud yeah. of because I feel like you know playing sports in college really is one of the most unique experiences in the world. You know, no other country yeah. really does it the way that the United States does it. Could there be improvements? There could be a lot of improvements. And I think right now we're facing one of the times in, in history where, hey, college sports might change forever after 2020. Yes. But um, it really is one of the most unique experiences, man. And I'm really, really thankful that I got to, you know, to go through that. So uh, real quick, before we get into learning more about you and your new podcast, I wanted to get some some perspective on from your experience uh and like mm-hmm. you said uh even with the uh, ncaa so like right now we have uh the big 12 or the pac 12 excuse me that yeah. have the players have formed a union and what they are calling for is some change amongst the conference what do you think the players should be or are they you know too far-fetched with what they're trying to accomplish or do you think that's something that you know should be changed within the conference leadership as far as like 50 percent uh, uh distribution of pay and uh things like uh six years after they're out of uh playing still getting medical coverage do you think those things are fair or is that too far-fetched uh to ask for for the conference yeah i, I think um first and foremost one of the most important distinctions to point out is that these 400 student athletes in the Pac-12 are actually trying to stay away from forming a union, right? So what they're saying is, hey, we saw the attempt back in 2015 by the football players at Northwestern, them trying to form a union and it failed. So we don't want to unionize as a group. We just want to, hey, we're coming together as a group and we're saying that we can do a quote unquote work stoppage, right? Because they understand that the leverage that they have now. And mm-hmm. whenever you actually go and you look at the demands that they're asking, right? There's health and safety protection, protect all sports, right? By, by eliminating excessive expenditures. Uh, they want to end racial injustices in college sports and in society. And then they're looking at economic freedom and equity. And yo, none of those things are too far fetched. You know, whenever you actually stop and look at it, I think one of the biggest things is like the players really starting back with the George Floyd protests have started to realize what kind of power and leverage that they actually hold. So it went from the George Floyd protest. Now it's at the point to where, yo, all this stuff that's going on with COVID-19 prevention or precautions, they don't feel like they're being taken care of. I don't know if you saw the story about the cornerback from Virginia Tech who decided to opt out of the season. He's not going to play. He's projected to be a first round pick. He wow, wrote about no, it. In pro football. It. Yeah. So he was writing about it in pro football talk. And he said the wow. team went to go work out at Myrtle Beach. Right. Which isn't too far from from campus to mm-hmm. go to work out over there. And they're looking around. They're not doing Yo, nobody's wearing masks. They're not taking any protocol, no social distancing or anything like that. So he looked at that. And whenever they went back to campus, nobody was, you know, they weren't testing. They weren't looking mm-hmm. after the interest of the student athlete. So in his mind, he rationalized it. And he said, yo, this risk is a lot mm-hmm. riskier than the, actual, you know, than the reward. So he said, yo, I'm out of there. So whenever mm-hmm. you look at that and you're looking at how these administrators and these conferences and the NCAA at large are really, it seems like they're failing the student athlete in terms of the protection. I don't yeah. think it's, uh, it's far-fetched for them to say, yo, we actually want to be seen as more than just chess pieces. There was a, a, a leak. The SEC was having a conference meeting. And in that conference meeting, one of the administrators from the SEC was talking about, uh, you know, he said the only reason why we're bringing students back on campus is because we want to have a college football season. 
Mm-hmm. Kind of yeah, you know, somebody said that on the call and, and somebody recorded it and leaked it on the internet. Oh man. And whenever you take a look at that and you're just like, that's that that honestly is it's it's disgusting. And I'm glad that the student athletes are recognizing the power of their voice and they're really, you know, they're holding them to you know put put putting them to the fire and saying, look, we understand how spending is done. We understand how there's a lot of neglect in the way that spending happens. And even if it's not uh, you know, us getting paid to play, at least push forward the name, image, and likeness and make it to where the stipulations aren't really hindering us from getting fair market value. So, yo, That's honestly, awesome. I say it's about time. Like, hey, we- and you know what? I was I was talking to someone today uh, earlier, and you bring up a great point. And you said that uh, the, the standout player was from Virginia Tech or West Virginia? West Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, okay, because I know that uh, my guys at West Virginia that I uh, uh, speak with on a regular, they had an outbreak at their uh, football yeah. training camp. But uh, we, were, me and this uh, older lady were just talking about how everything after, not just COVID, but after the killings is going to change. And, and that's as far as, um, and, and I mentioned that to say that people can't just turn the other eye or brush things under the rug anymore. Things are being addressed. So Absolutely. that's why I'm yeah so i'm glad you said that and i wanted to get your perspective on that that and that's i 100 percent agree with you man uh it is time to you know bring light to a lot of things and, and as bigger organizations they they can't just turn the other cheek and not say anything about it anymore and wait for it to blow over i would say that's probably been one of the biggest blessings of this whole pandemic you know of course it's yes. horrible that so many people are dying one thing that's true though is it's holding a lot of people to you know reveal what was in the closet um, it's, it's, it's holding people to say, hey, if you have a strong foundation, you're going to be able to come out of this thing fine. But if not, your organization just may crumble. So you're seeing the people who are doing it right and doing it the wrong way. And that's not just the institution at large, but that's football coaches at the same time, too, because you saw what's happening at Iowa. Right. Yes. You yes, see you know, these things starting to come out because players feel like, you know what, all this racial injustice stuff, I feel the courage to actually come out and use my voice. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think that um, it actually does more good than it does harm. Totally agree. Now, real quick, another uh, sports related question. And you uh, used to be in Miami last year with the Dolphins. Yeah. So I have a quick question for you. Your guy, uh, the Rock Johnson, Dwayne Rock Johnson is yeah. behind the XFL. It's like he's really, you know, tuning into that character he had on HBO. Yeah, no <laughs> so how do you feel about him and his uh, his investment team oh. buying the XFL? You think they're going to maintain that, man? Yeah, so Red, Red, Redbird Capital, The Rock, and then Danny Garcia, uh, the three of them came together, bought it out, um, you know, right before the bankrupt um, trial, the bankruptcy trial, $15 million. And I think that um, if I understand correctly, it'll take until Friday for everything to actually go through um, mm-hmm. for the court to approve it. Um, everybody loves The Rock. You know, yes. everybody thinks The Rock is cool. I think one of the coolest things about the whole thing is the fact that Danny Garcia becomes one of, not one of, but the first female ever to become a uh, owner of a sports league at large. And the NF- the XFL showed promise, you know, whenever it was going on earlier this year, if it wasn't for COVID, um, you know, they would have, you know, went through the entire season, but it, the way that they were operating, I do believe was operating in a, um, in a way where they understand where they're at. They're not trying to compete with the NFL. They were doing what they were doing mm-hmm. in the spring. Yeah. And honestly, right now, the most successful league, um, in terms of the you know the post pandemic era is the NBA and it's because they're able to have a bubble. Well, since the XFL only has 18, one would think that they would try to create a bubble like atmosphere um, because there's only eight teams and they can keep it a little more controlled than other leagues can. So, uh, you know, we'll see what the Rock and 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 Redbird Capital and Danny Garcia are able to do because it, it really is an exciting thing and I think it would be good for uh, the players and for fans if they had more football and more options. Now, uh, and you just mentioned something with the uh, XFL, possibly, you know, like you said, they have a smaller uh, or a smaller amount of teams mm-hmm. being able to create that bubble. Do you think some of the conditions uh, for the NFL can be maintained by, you know, individual teams like the Saints are doing? So the Saints have uh, created a small, uh, what did they do? A little hotel for their players for training camp. Do you think that should happen on all, you know, as a whole for the NFL to kind of narrow the the gap from, you know, this virus spreading? Yeah, from my understanding, the league is actually doing all that they can for, you know, for prevention of the virus spreading. Um, one thing that I have noticed, um, I noticed this with the Cleveland Browns, I noticed it with the Miami Dolphins, um, I noticed it with the Chargers. Their facilities are like basically 
COVID-19 proof, you know, like okay. coronavirus proof. And it's to the point where I've talked to a couple guys, they say that they feel safer whenever they're in the building than whenever they're out of it because of all the preventative measures that are being taken from the team side. So wow. based on everything that I've seen so far, man, it seems like, uh, you know, they're going about it the right way. Um, mm -hmm. If somebody gets tested positive, they're getting put on a reserve COVID-19 list. Um, same thing goes for, for coaches, right? So it's not just players, but it's also coaches that are getting tested on a regular basis, limiting the amount of staff that are actually allowed to be in the building. Um, so, so far, it seems like they're going about it the right way, and it'll be real interesting to see how the rest of the year plays out for them. Man, that is awesome. Um, and, and you get, I, I appreciate you telling us that because we get another, uh, you know, outlook or, you know, look at what we don't see or but based on what we only hear on ESPN and, you know, the the – the uh, talks from the players complaining about, you know, safety. But, uh, you know, that is another way to think about it with all the per uh, precautions that the lead is taking. One would might feel, you know, a lot safer uh, in the team's, you know, facilities. Absolutely. So that's awesome. So, le so let's learn about Eve, man. Let's learn about Eve. So tell me, tell me this. What was your motivation, first of all, behind your new podcast called Eve's Morning? Uh, so the podcast, good evening. Um, it's actually, uh, you know, it's, Excuse it's me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know y'all, y'all, y'all good, bro. It's a, uh, you know, play on, on words, right? My name being E. Yeah. So it's good parentheses, Y V E S and then Ning N I N G. And yes, the motivation honestly came from my wife. Um, my wife never gets on Twitter, but one day she was on Twitter and she was looking at my Twitter feed and she was like, Oh, you have some good insight on some things. And, the conversations that we have, I feel like a lot of men, she said men specifically, she felt like need to hear um, some of the messaging. And she and I had already been talking about, you know, launching a podcast together uh, mm -hmm. in the past. And she said, you know what, I think you should do one alone first. And then maybe later we can come and do one together. And as soon as she said that, I was like, you know what, I'm with it. Um, and I wanted to be transparent in it in, in the hopes of um, inspiring other people and motivating other people. So I was just very transparent in that first episode where I talked about the, the, the whole job transition and losing a job during the pandemic mm -hmm. and what that did to us. Um, you know, so episode one, uh, we were just talking about a job shift, a career shift, a mindset shift. We dropped mm -hmm. the podcast and got over 200 different messages of people just you know, showing their appreciation and feeling like they can relate. And honestly, this podcast is growing at a way faster rate than I than I anticipated. I actually just dropped an episode uh, tonight, um, just about you know Christianity as a black person. Uh, so yeah, yeah. being black and being a Christian. So um, I'm about to check that out because I I got some good yeah. stuff from you. I checked your podcast out uh, twice, and then we actually right. have a lot of similarities, man. Um, and I, I'm gonna tell you uh, one of them that I really like. But uh, you uh, on one of your podcasts, you you dropped your core values and it was so similar to how I changed and formatted mine as I grew as a spiritually, uh, educationally, as I, you know, continually to work on my doctorate degree. And those core values were, uh, let me, let me get them. I wrote them down. They were faith, action, inclusion, and growth. growth. Yeah. Could yeah. you explain why those are your core uh, values and how they influence your your path? Yeah, I think you know life can happen one of two ways, right? Life can happen by default, or you can have it happen by design. And for a lot of people, I think too often they have it happen by default. Hey, let's just go with the motion. Let's go with the flow. Um, figure out what I am as things happen to me. What's so important to actually establish that for yourself, so that you know, hey, you have better decision making. And you can know, hey, this is a filter of how I can process my information through these core values whenever mm -hmm. life happens to me. So for me, you know, the most important thing for was my faith. That's the foundation of just who I am, um, you know, how I think through things, uh, you know, the, the, the Bible. I believe in it, uh, you know, my spirituality, who I am in Christ, my identity in him. Um, and that mm -hmm. informs the decisions that I make. And then from there, you talk about inclusion, which I recently just changed to unity, right? So faith and unity. Um, it's a way that, you know, diversity is important, of course, but I think inclusion is even more important because now you're allowing different people to have a voice. People who don't look like you, people who don't come from where you come from, people who don't may have a different voice than you, different social economic backgrounds. Um, I think so many of those things are just valuable because that's what allows us to learn, right? Yeah. And not just learn, but that's how, uh, that's what heaven's supposed to look like. 
You know, it allows mm. for everybody to be represented. Amen. And honestly, I believe that anything in life that is worth doing is worth doing with people. So that's why I like unity, right? Let's all come together and let's all move in the same direction because what you'll find is often we're a lot more similar than we are different. So totally the third thing was growth, right? In football, what did they say? If you ain't getting better, you're getting worse, right? <laughs> and there's no in between. There's no being stagnant. So I don't want to be getting worse, right? So whether that's in my nutrition, whether that's in my exercise, whether that's in my relationships, how, I'm at, how I am as a husband, whatever it is, I want to find ways that I can continually grow, right? And that's even educating myself, the books that I'm reading. I don't want to limit my education just to what I learned in school, but I yes. want to you know, consistently just to be challenging my thoughts as well um, with other people and then also individually. And then finally, action. Right. A lot of people are you know, about ideas and they have thoughts mm -hmm. and they have concepts and all those things are great. But yeah, at the end of the day, what gets rewarded is execution. Right. Yeah. So I believe that, yo, know, you could talk about it or you can be about it. And, uh, you know, as the great philosopher Drake once said, when all is said <laughs> and done, more is always said than done. So I'd rather hey. be one of the people that's doing instead of uh, instead of saying. So, yeah, those are my four that's core awesome. values, man. That's what I stand by. I think that's awesome. And, and the two that I just recently added as I you know, within the last four years of growing more education was uh, inclusion and action. And like you said, to me, inclusion uh, is important because like you, uh, or to me versus is the input of others from different cultures is very important. Yeah. Like you said, that's how you learn. That's how you grow. And you don't just get one aspect that, that yes, man, you know, you get a different feel so you can, you know, grow yourself. And then action is brings me back to what you said with your wife. My uh, fiance is actually the one that prompt me to, you know, do a podcast as well, nice, man. Nice, and man, and man. Uh, if you got yourself yeah, a good man. one too, man. Yeah, that's man. It. I'm telling you, man, because of, uh, that's the difference between a millionaire and somebody that's stagnant, man putting right. that you know, ball in motion and getting things rolling. And that's a, that holds a lot of our people back in our community that I see on a personal level uh, in my community. And I wanna yeah. give that out. So I'm glad you were able to come on and just share your, your, four, your four cores because they're very important, man. Those four things are very important. That's yeah, awesome, man. man. And think about it this way too, man. I remember I was uh, listening to Eric Thomas, actually, it was ET. Okay. And he was talking about how we live in a day and age where so many people consume content, right? It's just like, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, content, 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 taking it all in. And you know, people could come to you and they can recite all the stuff that they learn and they watch and they listen to. That's great. But mm -hmm. all this content, what good is it if you don't actually go and you apply it? You know? So he was talking about like, yo, you can read all these books and yay, yeah, good for you. You read a 400 page book, but I read chapter one. And after I read chapter one, I said, let me go apply chapter one. Cause I'm full right. off of chapter one. I'm not getting to chapter two yet until I can take this chapter one and apply it. And it's too many people that, hey, I can read this whole book. And let me brag That's about fact. this book that I read, but are you actually applying <laughs> reading? Cause That's what good fact, is it? Man. You know what I mean? That's all it is. Hey, look, if you don't get motivated and baited by Eric Thomas, boy, I tell you. Hey, yeah, yeah. From back in the day, been getting motivated by it. <laughs> and, and then on top of that, just a segue, if you don't get motivated by ease, uh, and check out his podcast because I looked at two and I was like, this man is on it because it was something I could relate to and something I'm using right now. So man, let's just skip to it. Where can they catch your podcast so they can be motivated like I was, bro? Yeah, man. Anywhere that you listen to podcasts. So you can go uh, find Good Evening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, uh, Google Podcasts. Honestly, any place that, that you can find podcasts, um, you'll be able to find a Good Evening. So actually go ahead, subscribe, follow it, leave a review, five stars, hopefully. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Definitely. Hey, I have a big question for you though, man. And, and I, this is, I'm very excited that you were on here uh, because when we spoke uh, immediately, man, I, we, we clicked um, just regular conversation and you told me about your faith. And it was like, you know, I'm a baby in Christ to be honest with you. And we're talking about intertwining faith and sports okay so mm -hmm. what what happened to boost your desire to even want to uh want to search for you know growth in faith growth in god yeah. what was what was that that pushed you yeah man my spiritual journey um you know for, for, for a long time in my life i wasn't living according to the faith that i professed and i had and it wasn't until i was 19 years old that uh, it was actually a teammate of mine at Oklahoma State who explained the gospel to me so clearly 
in a mm -hmm. way that I never heard of before, right? How distant we are from God and how Christ came in between in order to bridge that gap. And, uh, you know, we don't have to be perfect, but it's through Christ that we're able to get to God. And, you know, whenever he explained it, I was just like, man, you know, that was good. And, and, and it led to me having some questions and internally, um, you know, just had to come to, 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 to grips with, hey, who is it that I actually want to be in the faith? And uh, long story short, it led to me giving my life to Christ when I was 19 years old. Uh, awesome. And, and then the, the following year after that was one of the toughest years of my life. You know, to this day, it was one of the toughest years of my life. And the only way, the only way I was able to make it through was because of my faith. And mm -hmm. even now, whenever I'm hit with different stumbling blocks and obstacles, you know, I, I can refer back to uh, to scripture, right? I can refer yeah. back to Matthew 6, 33 and say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added on to you, right? Chapter, you know, verse 34, do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Focus on today because today has enough troubles of its own. You know, going That's back right. to these verses, right? Um, you know, the Lord will give you wings that allows you to soar and, you know, things like that. I know where my strength comes from now. So even whenever it comes to my career, um, you know, being able to give that to God and saying, God, I don't know where the heck you're taking me and where mm -hmm. I'm going with this, but I'm gonna fully trust you that you're gonna be able to provide. And the reason I can trust you is because you've shown me time and time again that that's you know right. that you're worthy, that you're worthy of that trust. So it's caused my faith, my faith to grow, man. And that's why it's my number one core value. That's why I implemented in every single aspect of my life, man. Mind, body, spirit, all of it. Man, that's dope. And, and I like I like it too, because uh, you know, as men, uh, a lot of times we don't have mm -hmm. these real conversations with our boys, you know what I mean? Yeah, we really yeah. don't, man. Yeah, man. And, and it's very imperative, especially as we grow older. And, and, and you want to, like you said, you, want, you don't want to be in the same position you were five, 10 years in the past. But another similarity is, uh, and what I wanted to say was, uh, what I noticed with you was uh, I had the same thing as you. I had people in my, in my backing that pushed me back towards, mm -hmm. the, you know, the gospel when I was falling off, you know, in college and stuff. And oh, then... Yeah. Ultimately, it was my fiance that was the biggest force, you know, that, you know, got me right and wanted to, you know, have a relationship with God. But my, my next question is you. How, how does that help you just uh, growing more wiser in that area, not only spiritually, but, you know, in your career uh, with sports, with uh, what your, your future endeavors in all your endeavors uh, going forward? Yeah, I mean. It's, it's 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 the handbook, right? It, it, it's my manual uh, to life. Um, I can even talk about just recently, whenever um, I had to transition from the Dolphins, right? Five years with the Dolphins, loved my experience there, loved being able to make a difference in, in, in these men's lives. But whenever it was time to transition, honestly, I didn't worry. You know, there was never, uh, you know, a minute where I where I panicked or I worried, and I owe all of that just to my faith. Right. For me to be able to just have that complete confidence that, hey, God is working and he's about to do a miraculous work right now. And I don't even know what it's going to look like, but it's because I don't know what it's going to look like mm -hmm. that, um, you know, whenever it's all said and done, I'll be able to say, oh, that was all God and it wasn't me. Right. I'll be able to point to him. So, you know, whenever it comes to my career, that was a huge deal for me because I used to be one of those people who I felt like I had to be in control of everything. You know? Yeah. Hey, I got to have control of my life. And I think especially as men, oftentimes we feel like if I don't have a plan, then I'm failing at life. And of course, you know, I try to have a five year plan, a 10 year plan, a 30 year plan. But mm -hmm. ultimately, yeah, we can have a plan, but it's the Lord that's going to direct our steps. You know, just like it says. Mm -hmm. in so he's the one that he goes before me and he shows me the light. And he says, look, as long as you're attached to me, right, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So as long as I'm attached to the vine, right, I believe that it's all going to work out, man. And, you know, I've seen that be true um, time and time again in my life. Uh, and, and it's awesome that I have my wife who's able to actually, uh, you know, grow with me in that faith, you know, on, on a regular yeah. basis. We're doing our reading plan together. We're praying together. So it's, it's been everything, man, especially in my career. That's awesome, man. And I'm over here learning from you as we go, man, you know, just absorbing the jewels. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Hey, and uh, I, I do have another question for you, though. Uh, so right now you uh, transition out of the Dolphins and you're working with uh, uh, Sports Agency, I'm correct? Correct. Yes. I'm wearing a T-shirt right now. So you'll see uh, Let me check it out. Neo Star Football. So okay. Neo Star Football Sports Agency that's actually based in Florida. Um, but yeah, just recently um, started working with them and they've been around, you know, for decades. 
Okay. And, um, you know, Ralph Stringer, he's the owner, he's the president and founder of the, of the agency that represent 15 um, Hall of Famers, um, including Dan Marino and uh, Jason Taylor. And right now um, they have a couple guys who are currently in the NFL. Uh, I love this agency because they take a, it's a boutique style approach. And what I okay. mean by that is they have the capabilities of any of the big industries, but they choose to have a smaller number of clients so that they can completely personalize the experience for those clients and give them all their full attention. Um, so right now with them, I'm working in a role of, um, you know, player development manager, as well as, uh, you know, marketing uh, for these players. And it's very rare that you'll find a sports agency that really looks out for the holistic development of these athletes. So just oh, the wow. simple fact that we have player development that's happening uh, within the agency shows that, you know, they, th this is not just about the player, but it's also about the man. And what we know in yeah. sports, is if the man's not right, the player will never be right. Exactly. So, so exactly. yeah, just, just love that simple fact. And that is dope. And, and that, that is awesome. Cause I was just gonna ask you, uh, you don't find, like you said, too many agencies that has that, that wants that holistic approach to develop a player totally so that they don't, you know, uh, miss, you know, manage in certain areas of their life, which, you know, they might not, and they might not get that tutelage from uh, a certain other agency. So that is, that is awesome, man. Yeah, man. It's about, you know, financial literacy. Are you budgeting? What taxes look like during the season? Transitioning, uh -huh. the professionalism, understanding the difference between league value and team value, right? Those different things and getting wisdom from people who are other, uh, other people who are represented within the agencies, you know, people who have been able to exceed at a high level. How do they do it? But also, of course, being able to leverage your NFL identity in order to create opportunities mm -hmm. for you off the field right now um, so that whenever it is time for you to transition out of the game, you can have an easier and smooth transition and, and not go broke, but instead still have purpose whenever football is over for you. Now, do you ever have to uh, like counsel any of your clients about um, soft skills and, and <clears throat> the way that it helps land them sponsorships for, you know, let, let's say a player, you know, you don't manage him or anything, but A, a B, you know, he had goes through certain things. It, would you take a player like that to help him develop their soft skills so they can get, you know, sponsorships and, you know, things like that in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Just even from the way that you're communicating all the way to, you know, what kind of presence you have on social media. You know, those the, all those different, um, you know, soft skills about I think it all comes down to this, man. Emotional intelligence. How well do you know gotcha. yourself? What is it that motivates you? Um, what is it that inspires you? Um, self-regulation and self-awareness is huge. I think the self-awareness is key. So um, for those guys being able to, you know, take certain tests and evaluations that uh, allow them to understand their personalities better, even personality assessments and things like that. Um, you know, the more that they can know themselves, the better that they can actually align with brands and things that they care about. So that way they're not just, yeah. hey, here's something that's throwing you a bunch of money, but is it something that you actually value? So mm -hmm. yeah, no, absolutely what you said, man, being able to um, conduct those um, soft skills assessments, um, I think that um, allows us as an agency to thrive, but it also allows the player to thrive as well. Man, I think you're on it, man. Uh, so I just want to, first of all, I'm like very, I'm, this is one of these show or episodes. I'm going to go back Eve and watch <laughs> and, and take the bits and pieces and just all the jewels that you dropped today, man, because it was, it was powerful, man. And I, and if you're watching, please tune in. Uh, is there a certain day that you, uh, you, uh, drop your shows or yeah, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday evenings, man. So we drop it twice a week right now. We're on episode five. Uh, episode six is drop it on, on Thursday. Um, shoot. Honestly, I'd love to know what people even think that, you know, people, what people would like to hear on the podcast, man. So if you want to okay. go ahead and follow me on Twitter, on, on, on Instagram, um, uh, even on LinkedIn, um, just type in Eve Batoba. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that will pop up. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and <laughs> connect with me on that. Hey man. And you know what, we're going to be, uh, you know, as well cross networking and I'm going to be pushing, uh, your podcast as well, man, because like yeah, I said, uh, dope brother is dope man i, I want to thank that. you man for coming on enlightening i'm gonna be pushing this and like i said watching it over so uh my replay viewers and i'm you know tag my pastor and everything because it was just a, a dope man conversation that need to be had and i like how you intertwine it with sports man absolutely brother thank you for having me on man it was it was definitely fun man hopefully we get to do this again hey 
I have an idea and I would love for you to, you know, if you have time, man, to definitely come back on, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We got to chop it up. Chop it up. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, hit you up in a second, man. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and sign off brother. All right. Once again, blessings to you and everything that you right. do in the future, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Likewise. Same to you. All right, bro. All right. So once again, that was my man ease. That was amazing. Uh, and this turned into a man talk, like, the type of conversations that you know can empower you as a man uh things that you might go through because a lot of things he spoke about are you know i can relate to on a personal level and i know if i can a lot of other men can as well um so if you can do me one favor go down below there's a little icon that says share share this to any guy any woman any organization, any team that you think that could utilize that or this information. This was awesome. Um, we have some other great names coming up um, in the future. Let's just stay tuned. I'm gonna be, uh, you know, dropping that uh, within the next couple of days. Um, and I truly appreciate you tuning in. Uh, once again, this was uh, Jarrell's Journal. Uh, stay plugged in and I will see you next time. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now this is your journey in your real journal. Say it now, yeah, that's right. Up. Not less but the best. This is your journey in your real journal. Say it now, stand up. All over the globe. This is your journey in your real journal. Two six. And city stands up, two six. This your journey in Jarrell's journal. Let's go. Bring it with me, the source of your information. Created to cover all sorts of sports and many players. In the making, there is none other like it. From the majors to the minors, it's tailored to be your lightning. To politics with the globe and unfolding. Athletic platform for the world to be whole. Stay tuned as I cover your thoughts and views. Innovating a structure to stand taller for the player of the day making way for tomorrow consistent content distributed with quality as passions of the youth get used creating prodigies the cornerstone for the call lens and interviews opinions countdowns trivia is the latest news bearing gifts so this for me to you guaranteed to be what you don't want to miss so have a seat cause I'm back